Good afternoon. Welcome to Beit Ratum on a Sunday afternoon, 4 o'clock. And um, very special welcome if this is your first visit to Beit Ratum. Um, I'd like to say a few words uh, about Beit Ratum uh, for those people in particular, because it's a strange kind of place. You know, people walk in here, what is this place? Well, it's many, many things. It's a culture center, it's, um, it's a bit of a shop, it's a bit of an art gallery. It's a meeting place. It's a meeting place for the grassroots. It's a meeting place, I think, for people who, who want change. People who see um, that we can be doing better than what we are doing. And the um, base of um, is Arabic for House of Olive. And our roots are in Palestine, but our aspirations and our inspiration is much more global. It's only through solidarity across peoples, across issues, across geography, that's going to lead us into something better than we have as a planet, as a human family. Um, Bates Atun is a non-profit. We are completely volunteer-run. So, for tonight, I would, or to this afternoon, I want to say thank you to Aisha for allowing me to speak and introduce Bates Atun to you, but also for um, her initiative to have this event. I mean, I know that there are other people with her, but, but she's the one who contacted Bates Atun and said she wanted to, you know, have this event uh, in honor of uh, a much beloved professor. And it, it just gives us great, great pleasure to be able to, to be the venue for that. And uh, the title is perfect. This is who we are. It's poetry, it's politics, it's revolution. Uh, putting over all my emails or my late phone calls and whatnot. But, um, well, welcome everybody. Um, I just have a little spiel, so just... Uh, Hang in there. Uh, welcome everyone to Poetry Politics Revolution. I randomly decided to call it that because that made sense for me. Um, this is an evening of poetry or afternoon of poetry with Goshelia Banerjee, uh, Chiran, and Himani Banerjee. Uh, so the plan is we're going to be doing introductions. I'm going to be doing introductions. Um, I'm going to thank Robert from Bates Adun as well as um, Himani's class from last fall around this time. It was Theorizing Modernity and a lot of you guys are here, and this sort of came out of that, when I think it was the last class, and we were at your, in your living room, and you pulled out some poetry, and we were all just, you know, we were bawling, and we were really touched, and we, it felt really good, and I kind of wanted to do it again, for one, and then also just extend that to other people that I figured would really enjoy that. Um, so I just want to say a little something about how I kind of got here this week, because I think it's been an interesting week for me. Um, it's been a busy week, but then again, I'm, you know, the city, everyone's busy all the time, I feel like, but I want to tell you a bit more about my week and how I got here, because I think it's related to how, sort of how, yeah, why we're all here right now. So on Tuesday, there was a call out from No One Is Illegal and End Immigration Detention Network, it's, all, it's also called EDEN, um, and they wanted people to come as observers to the Immigration Detention Center at 385 Rexdale. Um, and this is during an administrative hearing for Michael Mavogo. So I had some time and I went. And I knew about the case, but it didn't really prepare me for the sadness that I felt at being at this hearing. And for those of you who may not know, Michael Mavogo has been held... Uh, without charge in a maximum security prison for like, the last eight years uh, because immigration officials can't determine where or how to deport him. So they don't release him, they don't give him status, and they don't report him. They also don't charge him with a crime because he hasn't committed one that they could charge him with. Like, this is sort of just something that's going on, and I just wanted to share that. But um, So he wasn't even allowed to attend his hearing. He was there by satellite on a TV screen while uh, a bunch of guys basically determined his future. And he's there in an orange jumpsuit on the TV uh, while his fate is being determined in the room that I am actually in, but he's not in. Um, he is jailed at the Central East Correction Center, um, with 119 other immigrants who are jailed there without trial or charge. And they have been carrying out a protest, a, um, a strike. There was a hunger strike since last... Well, there was a hunger strike in September 2013. And they have been doing ongoing protests of various kinds. 
um, there since September 2013. So these migrants are demanding a 90-day limit on detentions pending deportation, an end to maximum security imprisonment for immigrants, and a complete overhaul of the detention center, uh, the det detention review process, rather. So what's more is that Canada also jails children. Um, a lot of people don't know this, and I kind of wanted to take this platform um, to kind of just say that. There are actually school buses that pick up kids from these prisons every day and drop them back off because Canada jails um, children at, in these prisons. So there are no one as legal members here, and I think maybe Eden as well. If you want to know more, you could ask me or we could connect you to one of those people. Um, so that was Tuesday, uh, which brings me to yesterday, which was Friday. Um, and yesterday I joined some friends at Jane and Finch Action Against Poverty Rally Against it was a rally against poverty. You know, yesterday was the International Day for the Eradication of Poverty. Um, and JFAP, which is um, the organization that was doing this rally, uh, they've been organizing for six years. And they have various demands, among which one of them is raise the minimum wage to $14 an hour. And I just think it was a really important rally to go to. But also, on my way up there, I was thinking about how a lot of the political Organizing and events like these are very much centered around downtown. And even myself, as someone who grew up in Jane and Finch, it took, it took me so many years before I could even get to a JFAP event. And I wanted to tell people about this just because we all should consider um, that a lot of the anti-poverty and anti-racism struggles that are taking place are actually taking place in the inner suburbs, the kind of places you have to sit on a bus at least an hour to get to from yeah. here. And we should consider that, and if we want to support them, we should ask them how they might need our support. And I could also connect with, I think there's some JFAP people here as well, uh, but ask me again and I will put you in touch. And then the last thing last night was, uh, right after the rally at Jane Finch, was an event to organize solidarity with the resistance in Kobane um, at OAZ. And I'm going to end with that, but I'm going to say this. Um, so, about Kobane, um, it's a city in the autonomous region of Rojava, and as it exists today, it's one of the few bright spots to emerge from the tragedy of the Syrian Revolution. Having driven out agents of the Assad regime in 2011, and despite the hostility of almost all of its neighbors, Rojava has not only maintained its independence, but it's a remarkable democratic experiment. So popular assemblies have been created as the ultimate decision-making bodies, councils selected with careful consideration of ethnic balance and deliberate inclusion of women. Uh, there's a women's council, a youth council, and uh, what someone calls a feminist army, which sounds pretty amazing. There's a union of free women that have carried out a large portion of the fighting against ISIS. So Kabani has been under siege uh, both by ISIS and by Turkey for over a month. And there have been solidarity protests all over Iran, Iraq, and Turkey. And um, our friends last night were trying to organize solidarity between Toronto and Kobani as well. Um, and again, if you want to connect with that, I could try to put you in touch. So many of you um, here have far more busier and intense weeks than, than this, but I hope that this we're here and we feel a bit more rejuvenated, uh, considering that all these things happen, sometimes all at once and sometimes in a week, and uh, that we continue our support for immigration detainees to end immigration detention so that we can continue to fight against poverty in our communities and so that we can do solidarity work uh, with other regions of the world. So that was the idea, and I'm going to stop talking there, and I'm going to introduce Shalia Banerjee.